Okay, so we are going to talk about the Native American tribes that lived um, on the northwest coast. And if you look up here at our map, um, obviously they're right along the coast, up really, really far north. Uh, and let's let's just get into it. The northwest coastal region is home to many tribes such as the Haida, the Chinooks, the Macaws, and the Coatl. The early tribes of the northwest coast didn't practice democracy. Democracy includes all citizens in their government. Instead, the wealthy people ruled the clan. The wealthier a man, um, the wealthier men had more power. Generosity was highly valued because of its focus on wealth. The wealthiest clan at any time, um, at any given time, had the most power in the region. The Northwest Coastal Region has many resources for survival. This region offered mild, uh, relatively mild winters and summers. It is often cool and damp that helps plants grow and thrive. There are many rivers, lakes, coastal waters, which serve as sources for water for the people and the animals they hunted. It also provided a place for fish and other aquatic or water-dwelling animals to live. They are vast forests that are home to wild animals. Because this area ha is so rich in natural resources, it was easy for early residents to live. They could be hunters, gatherers, and fishermen. There wasn't much need for agriculture or farming since food was already so plentiful. The Northwest Coast region is well known for its abundance of food. Animals roam the forest along the Northwest Coast. They often migrate throughout the forest and along waterways. The early peoples commonly hunted animals such as rabbit, deer, and elk. They also fished and hunted much of their food from nearby waters. Salmon, seals, and whales are some of their favorite prey. They used harpoon-type spears to catch them. Whales, their main source of food, were the most difficult to catch, however. It was worth the effort. Sometimes it would take days to catch a whale, and it would, be, it would provide the people with food, rope, and skin for containers. Blubber or whale fat could be used as oil and drizzled on food. The Northwest Coast people traveled by canoes made out of cedar wood. They were called dugouts and used to catch seafood. They also traveled by foot to gather foods in the wild. The bushes gave them berries. The water provided shrimp, animal eggs, and oysters. To gather food, the people created beautiful baskets, and some baskets were woven with a unique family design. Since the Northwest Coast peoples did not have to go far for food, their homes were sturdy and made for permanent residents. Most of them lived in long rectangular buildings called longhouses. They were made from huge cedar planks. The giant cedar trees would be cut down and then split with beaver teeth and stone axes. One opening served as a door to the home. Another opening, um, open top, uh, allowed smoke from their fires to escape. Longhouses were so large that several families lived in one home. Like all North American tribes, the Northwest Coast peoples have many traditional beliefs and customs. They had a medicine man called a shaman. He was known to control spiritual forces, and he could use magic to help cure the sick. Shamans still practice today. Haida people were from the Northwest Coast, and the Haida were born either ravens or eagles. They own certain crests that represent their clan. They hold the right to display these crests. The members would construct totem poles of cedar wood. They carved their crests on poles. The animals or symbols had meaning. Each represented something in the creator's life. Each carving had a three-part story, the past, the present, and the future. Only the creator of the pole was permitted to tell his story, and sometimes he chose to keep it a secret. Totem poles were used for display, personal identity, and ceremonies. Since these tribes had no written language, the stories behind these poles were told orally. The totem poles could get up to 40 feet high. They would be found near the entrance of the owner's longhouse or grave maker. When the people were ready to raise and honor totem poles, they often held a potlatch. A potlatch was a celebration that lasted for days. At a potlatch, there would be a great would, would be a grand feast. Invited guests would receive many lavish gifts. This was a sign of wealth and generosity. The Coatl clan is another Northwest Coast tribe. They still practice potlatches today. Potlatches celebrate many events. They may celebrate status, wealth, marriage, important people, loved ones, leadership, or the people's relationship to animal spirits. Their songs, stories, dances, and ceremonies honor the things in nature around them. For example, they honor the animals, salmon, cedar trees, and rivers.